it's part time, you know, especially when having a kid and, you know, it's like I, I do what I can when I can and I have to work. Okay. All right. First glitch. It in. <laughs> so we get. We should be on. Let's see. We lost oh. Brandon's video. Oh, he'll come back. Okay. I don't know what just happened. There he is. Right, we got him. We got I don't him. know what happened there. <laughs> can you, no can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Sure can. Okay. All right, everyone, we are live with the alumni, Bayshore Christian Alumni Podcast. We're in season two. This is episode five. And like we say every week, it simply doesn't get any better. Um, the people we've got tonight are some of the most legendary names in Bayshore Christian basketball history. Um, just to let everybody know, we have several announcements before we get started. And of course, like always, there's always a glitch. We'll fix it some way or the other. So again, we can't tell you how happy we are to have these guys on tonight. John Michael Cabot, Jared Piazza, and Brandon Harrison. And we're expecting a very special guest to join us shortly, and that's Joseph Rollins. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. A um, few announcements I got before we get started. Obviously, the disclaimer, this is not a school podcast. Anything we say or do is not reflective on Bayshore Christian School. This is just us telling our stories from back when we were at the school. Um, we got seven or eight episodes left. This is a big one, but aren't they all? Tonight's episode is the Dibble Renaissance. Uh, this is the 2001 state final four run, 33 and four, monstrous victories, monstrous statistics, monstrous history that these guys created at Bayfield Christian. Um, and I think we've just got a very special guest joining us. It's not Joseph Rollins yet. This looks like Sam Smith. I don't think anybody's seen him in 20 years. Let's see. <laughs> Oh boy, Sam, I am is in the is in. Like I should have a dress shirt on, man. I'm going yeah. to dress. <laughs> I'm going out after the. I got to leave right at the end of this. So I don't don't mind me. I got to put pants on, but. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam. What's up? Never wearing pants. Yeah. Oh, uh, Sam, can you hear us? I can. Okay, great. Uh, thank, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We just hey, made a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. you look great. You look great. Thank you, sir. Uh, Appreciate it. Um, I just made the announcement. We are here with a legendary Bayshore team, the 2001 State Final Four run, 33-4. and four. Monstrous victories, monstrous history created by these guys. Got a few announcements before we get started. We're still waiting on one more legendary name. That's Joseph Rollins. We expect him to join us shortly. We'll get going until he gets here. A few announcements. One, just a reminder to everybody that watches, the school year has started at Bayshore and enrollment's up 25%. So we're really happy about that. Uh, Melanie uh, Valdez, Melanie Humanensky, I, I knew her as Valdez way back when, is the principal. She's got the volleyball team winning as usual. Um, they're two or three and zero out of the gate. Um, it's definitely keep some faith warriors in prayer. Mike Blocker, longtime Bayshore family. Uh, he's been in the hospital now for two weeks with COVID. Definitely keep him uh, in your prayers, him and his family, uh, the Blackson family, uh, Kim Blackson, Jennifer Blackson, 80s and 90s graduates. Their mom is also dealing with COVID. Uh, my sister, my dad have had some health issues. And of course, my co-host, Chris Pate, has had some health issues as well. So definitely keep those faith warriors in prayer. So now, here we are with some of the greatest names in Bayshore Christian basketball history. I'm going to go around the box here and, and let you introduce yourself and and tell us a little bit about what's been happening since graduation. And then I'm gonna go right into the season because we've got some public school victories early. We got some blowouts early. We're gonna find out what 2001 was like. We'll start with you, John Michael Cabot. Tell us about what's been happening in the last 20 years and what's going on in your life. It's absolutely insane. When I hear 20 years, I'm like, that's what my, my dad's celebrating. I'm not, it's only been like three years, but I cannot believe it's, it's over 20 years. It just seems out of this world, but yeah, we got, uh, Married for 13 years. I've got three kids, six, four, and six months old. And this is just as crazy as you would expect it to be, but uh, this is rewarding. We got Joe. We just Joe. got Joe Rollins. What's up, Joe? Welcome to the show. Joseph Rollins. It don't get any bigger than this, folks. I mean, the, the legendary names are across the board. Joseph, thank you for, oh, he can't hear us. On our end, we're good. Well, hopefully yeah. we'll get him back. Get him back. Michael, we got some kids. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so uh, three kids, and I work uh, at pay Paychecks as an area sales manager. Been there for about 10 years and having a really good career. 
But uh, yeah, lo loving life here in Tampa, Florida, in uh, the Carrollwood area. And uh, I guess that's uh, that's kind of catches you up on about the last 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> outstanding, outstanding. And of course, you come from not just, you're not just Bayshore basketball history, you're Bayshore Christian ministry history with your father, yeah. sister, a lot of history there. Yeah, totally. Well, I, I was fortunate enough, um, you know, one of the, if, if you know the staff at Bayshore, the they could make more money elsewhere. It's a real labor of love. But one of the amazing perks, at least when I was there, that they offered as a benefit was that the student child used to go uh, be able to attend for free. So to be able to go from kindergarten to 12th grade and receive the, the education, private education from a stand-up um, you know, school like Bayshore is something that I look back and just reflect on very fondly and I'm very appreciative for and, and carry genuinely carry a debt of gratitude for the sacrifices our parents made and stuff to to be able to, to allow that um so yeah it's it's pretty if it, it stretches i was born in bayshore from zero to <laughs> that's a great way to put it out yeah jo joseph can you hear us joe can you hear us i can i can hear you now oh that's great <laughs> we've got the main <laughs> man outstanding hey. Joseph, tell us what's been going on in your life, and then we'll go back to Jared, Brandon, and Sam. Tell us what's been happening the last 20 years since the uh, 2000 run. Oh, my God, that's so much. That's so <laughs> much. Um, basically, I got locked in with UPS. I started UPS in uh, 2004, so three years after I graduated. This is a little tough for me because I'm driving while I'm sitting here talking to y'all. <laughs> um, um, but then, so yeah, I got plugged in with UPS, started working at UPS in 2004. Uh, been with them 17 years now. You know, like I said, started working there, loading trucks. Um, then from there, started driving. And then in uh, 2013, I actually jumped ship and went to the management side. And I've been in a, I've been a, on a driver supervisor with UPS from 2013 to now. And uh, looking forward to getting promoted to a center manager. Uh, that's that's the, that's the next bowl and then i don't have to come in in these in this brown uniform anymore i'll start wearing polos and slacks you wear it well, you wear it well. <laughs> but yeah good, um, 2008 got married 2009 had my first child son and then 2013 had my little girl and actually just came from her first little basketball practice which was super cool um Seeing her out there, really exciting. So I'm looking forward to her starting to, to hoop more. Um, living in Kissimmee, Florida right now and working in UPS in Lakeland, Florida. So that's pretty much what I got going on right now, what's been happening in the past 20 years, trying to wrap it up, you know, make it as short and sweet as possible. That, that is awesome. Uh, your daughter's got that Rollins basketball blood, so she's going to be a WNBA superstar anytime soon. <laughs> That's what we're that's what we're hoping for. <laughs> we're gonna go to uh we're gonna go to Brandon, then Sam, then Jared. Uh, Brandon, I asked the guys before we came on the air, aren't you a Hollywood uh, legendary? I mean, you're a superstar in Hollywood. I mean, tell us about your life last twenty years uh, yeah. since you left the two thousand one Final Four run. Yeah, I wouldn't quite say superstar. You know, I'm still working on that. But um, the first job I actually I started as a firefighter and uh, for Hillsborough County. And I did that for two years. And uh, we were starting a Olympic team for firefighters. And man, I was, I felt like I was in the best shape of my life. So I was kind of at a crossroad where I was thinking of going back and pursuing basketball some more. And it just happened. I was, um, I was playing ball at a local tournament by Daryl Jackson oh, and yeah. approached the trial for slam ball. So, mm. uh, I, I dropped everything. I went down there. I tried out. And uh, a month later, maybe a month and a half later, I got drafted to uh, the team called the Slashers. And we actually uh, played the whole season here in L.A. and won a championship my rookie year. Oh, very so, good. Awesome. Yeah, it was, you know, it was a dream come true. But uh, for that to happen, I had to leave the fire department. So so then I was thinking, OK, um, I tried to be a firefighter. That was great. I mean, I had a great time doing it. And then I tried slam ball. That was great. So what else can I do? You know, 
Um, slam ball was supposed to be every year, but so I moved out here thinking I'll play slam ball. I'll do some acting and stuff that I've always wanted to do too. And um, it didn't quite work out with slam ball. The contract fell through. Uh, I ended up getting some contracts to play slam ball out in China in 2012 and in 2014. Um, I became a dad in 2012 also. So that was a year for me. Um, so it's great. I mean, my son just turned nine on Tuesday on the 24th. He was born a, a day after Kobe. So look out. He's actually born on Kobe Day. And so I'm, I'm now, I'm his full-time coach with COVID. Like he's been, everything in LA has been shut down for almost two years. So he's not able to go to practices. So it's basically me taking him to the park teaching them every, all the fundamentals and working on it. But same thing, you know, I'm hoping that he can carry the torch. I'm trying to pass it on to him. He's super tall for his age. He's already about 5'3", five, 5'4", five, at the age of nine. So, you know, he, he can hear me right now, but not to put too much pressure on him, you know. But uh, <laughs> Hey, that, so that hairdo looks nice. How was that? Your, your hairdo looks nice. You look Hollywood. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. I'm trying. I, trust me, I'm. I put every kind of hair growth chemical in this thing to keep it. <laughs> I see it. But, but I'm trying to, you know, I, I, I'm still training. Uh, there are rumors that slam ball is trying to make it back here to the States. So 2008 was the last draft they had. So I'm technically at 36. I'm the youngest guy in the league still. So uh, I know <laughs> I'm going to be able to play a little more. Guys are playing slam ball. Uh, in their 40s, though. So, and you see what Tom Brady's doing. So, I feel like <laughs> that, I should be able to have a, at least five more years in me, you know. So, yeah, so that's where I'm just still, I'm trying to stay in shape. And I, I do some acting. It's more like part time, though, you know, with uh, coaching him and having to work an actual job because the cost of living out here is crazy. But everything else, I mean, it's, everything is good, though. You know, everything's working out for me. I'm, I'm happy with it, the way everything is. Well, you look great. All you guys look great. And I, you didn't go into, I mean, I'm going to ask you later, you come from high level basketball or athletic stock in Tampa with your parents. So I'd certainly want to talk to you about that. We're going to now go to Sam Smith and Sam, tell us about the last 20 years since the 2001 Dibble Renaissance, what you've been up to. Hey, first of all, thank you. I appreciate it. This gives us a, a platform to speak and I haven't seen my, my bros in, 20 years so oh, that's great hey that's it's great. emotional a little bit because uh seeing these guys is you know is something i thought about the last 20 years you know and you don't realize it when it, and like john said 20 years people <laughs> tell you that in high school enjoy it while you can but man it flies i had no idea you know you think you know everything but you don't but man i miss you guys uh it was a pleasure that 2001, we were we were athletic, we were gritty, and we were underdogs. We were short, but we made up for it with our speed, athleticism, our 221 Kentucky Press. Nobody could beat that, you know. And I think that, and I was talking to Joe today on text. Not uh, we would have played that last game somewhere else other than that day in Lakeland. We'd have won that game. Uh, we were just off. And that whole season, we were impressive. I still have the shirt to this day. Well, we're number one in the state. I mean, what did we average? The 50-point blowout? 92 points a game. Yeah, we, we averaged a 50-point blowout. Yeah. I mean, you if you if most of us kids, if you didn't see us uh, practicing at Bayshore, we were in some park in maybe uh, Brandon, North Tampa, St. Pete, me and Joe were always in the courts somewhere in Port Tampa. All over. The most All gritty over. players, playing with the best players. We at AAU, the Graham brothers. When oh. we played at when we played at Robinson, Desmond Allison, Cedric Powell. We played with Africa. the best players of that era, including, you know, uh, you know, the uh, Elijah. You know, Elijah was good too. And he yeah. would come and play open court nights, and that guy was strong. He was, he was all right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so we had a plethora of talent, and the AAU team is where we got picked to play with. Mr. And the Brown. AAU team you're referring to uh, was that with Mr. Brown's Spirit of Tampa Bay? Spirit, yeah, yeah. yeah, Spirit, yeah. And you know, I 
I didn't make that first one, but that second one I made it and they just didn't have the funding or whatever it was. And then we, they, they dropped the team and we had open court nights and, you know, I transferred from Robinson over and people like Mr. Dibble and a couple sponsors and Miss Hoover and the connects and, oh. um, Gosh, I'm forgetting so many people that I mean to, I need to thank before we start saying all this. But there was a, the the Bayshore environment is a family environment, and when somebody's slipping, some of these folks I just need to thank because they stepped up and they made sure we were taken care of. Because I don't think many people knew that me and Joe or Brandon or anybody else came from a background where we didn't have much money, but we didn't have very much, and people let us come to the school and have this great environment, have this great basketball experience and just let us experience something we never would have had at Robinson, you know, but, and I, and I, before I say anything else, I just want to say thank you. If anybody's, if there's a voice for anybody else out there for all those parties that contributed to that 2001 series, because we couldn't have did it just by ourselves as athletes. I mean, we were a great team and we were gritty, but at the same token, we had you, we had coach Valdez, Coach Dill, well, we had, I mean, you would come in on a regular game night and that place was rocking. And I'd never seen that place rocking as much as the game before state. When we had that team from Miami come up, we yeah. weren't expected to even hang with that team. They had like two or three couple stars on their team and we beat them out of our gym, you know. But anyhow, um, that Tampa prep game was insane. Uh-huh. You know, we were down by two. Looking forward to talking back. about that one. We, we came back, we beat them. We weren't supposed to even hang with them. My junior year, when I transferred over, we were supposed to win six games that year. We ended up winning 16, you know. But anyhow, the last 20 years, <laughs> Air Force, uh, active duty security forces. It has not been kind to me. But you know what? I thank God because I'm back in Tampa now. It feels like uh-huh. sometimes, yeah, it feels like sometimes <laughs> you're out of jail, you know, because you come back and everything is different. You know, uh, Tampa's grown. It's hard to find um, residents now. Uh, you know, uh, it's just a different place. You know, I was texting Joe today and I was saying all the old parks that we used to go to to play basketball, like Hyde Park was a big one on the mm-hmm. weekends down there. They had a great basketball court and we'd go down there. We'd play ball all night, you know. And I just moved from San Antonio, which is uh, Military City, USA. And they didn't have that type of environment. I was looking forward to coming back home and seeing that and see what the kids do and everything else. And I haven't seen that since I've been back home. And it's been kind of surreal for me. And I'm, and I, yeah, you know, as, as a Floridian, I brag about that, you know, right. <laughs> things, things have changed. I mean, kids today and, and even adults don't go outside and play at parks like we saw back in the day. It's, it's changed completely. So you're exactly right. And we certainly want to say thank you for your service because. What you guys have had to endure yeah, the last yeah. 20 years has been uh, unbelievable. So thank you very much for keeping us all safe and we appreciate it. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're, we're going to talk now to Jared and then we'll get right into the season. Jared, tell us about the last 20 years. I mean, you like uh, John Michael have a, uh, a, what do you call it? Royal Bayshore name with the Piazza name. Yes, yes. Uh, 20 years, I've just been male modeling this whole time. Um <laughs> Watch out, Brandon. Yeah, you know, um, I, you know, keeping it short, just um, own, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not getting paid for it, but just doing it. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I've just, I've owned a few businesses over the last years. I've gone to medical school, physical therapy, kind of got out of that. Uh, too much, too much behind the scenes. Insurance companies are horrible. Um, and then I opened up my, my business now, the Piazza delivery, where we do, I do ATM deliveries. I got all kinds of stuff going on with that, but, um, yeah, everything's been, been going great for me as far as that business is really doing well. So you're, you're understating it. I mean, you've been highly successful businessman. So that's, that's really great to hear and see guys. We can't thank you enough for everyone being here. I'd like to have, um, get started with Joe Rollins first. I think he needs to unmute. I think I just unmuted him. Um, 2001, guys, uh, the dynasty is sort of creaking. Uh, I mean, it's hard to say it's creaking when you're still winning 20 plus games, but uh, the Elijah season barely finished above 500. That was 1998. Uh, 1999, you guys, I think, made the district title against Seminole Presbyterian and, and lost to them in the district title game. You had beaten them twice during the regular season. 
2000, we didn't even make the district title game. We got upset by Tampa Baptist. They hit a three-pointer with about four seconds left. Another team y'all beat. So you're winning 26, 27 games, both those seasons, but no trophies. And then as Sam sort of described it, each of you alluded to it, 2001 hits. And it is a whirlwind of massacres and domination. Uh, I've got some <laughs> scores. I mean, right out of the gate, you beat Temple Heights by 47. You beat Canterbury by 50. You beat Admiral Farragut only by 14. Uh, River Hills, you beat by 53. Uh, Tampa Baptist, you beat 102 to 27. Joseph, tell us a little bit about what your, your preparation leading into that season and did you expect to win? Oh, man. No, we did not expect that we was going to be waxing everybody like that. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I know when I first came, when, <laughs> that's just ridiculous. 103 to 26, good God. Hey, I remember playing those teams and I would look at the team, the dude had a ball. Yo, right here, right here. And it was straight up past it to you. With the, like, like it, it was pathetic. You know, we would just run down the court, lay up city. That was just having fun when we beat teams like that. But then you said when we played Admiral Farragut, we only beat them by 14. Yo, that was a tough team. Yeah, I, I felt tough. like we was playing dudes that they were shipping in from, you know, we're playing a bunch of uh, Luka Doncic's out there. You know, these six <laughs> shooters. Yo, hey, hey so Big 14 players. points. Hey, to beat them, beat those guys by 14, that's like we beat them by 30 in my that's eyes. Like a 3A we, too, we hand, we, that's what I'm saying. We handled them. We were playing team, Berkeley Prep, handled them. Nobody thought we had a chance against all these teams where they would come in our court. We went and played in that conference tournament where Tampa Prep won the whole thing. Nobody thought we had a shot for that. But coming into that season, I remember I was telling Dibble, he was like, what's your expectations? I should have set my expectations higher, but I was like, I want to make it to the final four. I should have said, I want to win the state championship. But coming from the sophomore, no, the junior year that we had, I was just like, eh, you know, I, I didn't really know what, what our team was going to be, you know, because we didn't do too great our junior year, and I felt like we should have been a lot stronger. But playing together all those years and then coming into that senior year, we gelled so well. Just like Tom, uh, Sam said, it was like a family. And even though we weren't the most talented, we knew – everybody's moves and where everybody was going to be. And we could just, we just played so well together. It, it just showed you that team ball will be just pure athleticism. And I, I, I love some of those blowouts that we, we had and thinking <laughs> about some of those, some of those memories of some of those teams that we got to rub it in their face for beating us all these years. And we came back and just was waxing them in their own gym. I think we put up a hundred on Tampa Baptist in their own gym too. Like yeah. 100 and something to 20 or something like that. Against we, Daniel we, Kitt. Yeah, we waxed Daniel Kitt in that Oh, whole yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Pookie. Yeah. 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 And he transferred to Tampa Baptist? So that, yeah. that yeah, he did transfer yeah. to Tampa Baptist. Did too, he did transfer to Tampa Baptist. But it's it's a lot of people that aren't on, on uh, this Zoom right now that contributed to that, man. I remember we had uh, Philip Brooks, young, mm -hmm. playing on the varsity team. Who was old boy that used to play football? Valdez, uh, Matt, uh, Matt grandson, Matt Marquito. Yeah, he, he could, could jump, jump, man. He could jump that out of the gym. Ridiculous. Yeah, that was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. Micah Johnson, clutch threes. Nick Ballingy, hard player. Um, it, it, it just we all just play together. Say it again. Kyle, we can't miss the centerpiece, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kyle. we wish yeah. Connect was on here I tonight. Was just thinking I mean, about, I was just thinking about um seniors, but yeah, or not just seniors, but. I can't believe I totally forgot about Kyle, maybe because he transferred. Maybe because yeah. he went to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, he was, John, he was, John Bailey. Uh, Let's just forget Bailey. Uh, yeah. Bailey. Connect, John Connect Bailey. was very yeah. important. Very, Connect was crucial. He was a, a critical component to y'all's success. And we just had him on tonight. Yeah, he was, very, he was a huge, great. big, huge, big man. Huge, big yeah. man. He played really well for us. But, you know, Brand, Brandon transferred over and Brandon played clutch. Brandon had a great inside game. Um, he was like a like a, how James Harden is right now. It seemed like you know he was unguardable, unstoppable, um, yeah. and, and we weren't the biggest team. And then, like Sam said, when we beat that team, uh, RJ was Henley. it RJ Henley or something Henley, like that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was we weren't. That was thank man. You went either. ten for ten from the free throw line in the fourth quarter. I mean, we won. I think by you know, fourteen points. That's third. You know, you we went. You went thirteen for thirteen for the game. Ten for ten in the fourth try. quarter you, on free throw, bro. You guys are understating, though. I mean, it, you're playing the Michael Jordan, oh, I'm the underdog sort of role here on this podcast. 
I coached a school by the name of Heritage Christian that you guys beat. I played you guys, my team, 92 to 63. Y'all blew us out. And I remember scouting the videotape. We watched about five minutes, and I said, this is a waste of time. We're going to lose by 30. And I told my assistant coaches to go home. So, uh, <laughs> I, mean, so I mean, you guys were a superpower. I want to go to Brandon yeah. Harrison. We just mentioned several of the blowouts. And it wasn't just with 1A or, you know, smaller private schools. I mean, we got um, – you beat Fort Meade. You beat them by 20. You beat East Bay High School, which was 5A uh, by 20. Brooksville Central by 16. Uh, three uh, large public high schools you guys blew out. Brandon, tell us what was your thoughts as you're proceeding through the first part of the season, through the Christmas tournaments. Are you thinking – this is really going to be a special season. Or are you still like, well, I don't know. we got a ways to go. What were your thoughts? So uh, coming into it, I didn't expect us to be beating people by 70 and 80 points. You know, I, <laughs> I, I definitely was happy to play. I mean, that was part of the reason why I came was because I knew they had some players, you know, and I knew that I felt like I could be somewhat of the missing, the missing piece, you know, um, because there was already talent there, but, once we started beating people by 40 and 50, you know, it was just like um, I wanted to do our part like the first quarter. That's just how I would approach the game. Like, all right, first quarter, we're going to try to go up by 20, you know, like <laughs> it just, just kind of coasted the rest, rest of the way. And our second string, they all they never gave up. The, they never gave up our leads, you know, so. It was really just a lot of fun. I was having a lot of fun. Um, I I was more living in the moment. I was younger. I thought I had, you know, this is just what it was going to be the next three years, you know. So <laughs> right. it was it was a lot of fun. I didn't really ever see us. I didn't think anybody could beat us once we got into around Christmas time. I figured we were going to go undefeated, you know. Okay. Close. Very good. Close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> almost. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, John Michael, then we'll come down to Sam and then Jared. John, John Michael, what was your perspective on the team? I mean, out of the gate, I don't see a loss. Maybe there is one. It looks like uh, Braden and Christian by, by, a, by a buzzer beater, maybe. Uh, one. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah. Cheap. Uh, so I want to hear from Sam and Jared about that game, but tell us about your perspective being on this very dominant team in the early part of the season. What were you feeling? Yeah, I, well, I had a, I think I had a very interesting perspective because it, everyone said already the cohesiveness and gelling of the team. And I don't know, some say maybe it was Brandon, you know, transferring in, you know, Joe being a senior. I don't know. I think it was maybe something to do with me um, transferring up from JV to varsity. Might have been course. something to do with it. So, yeah, of course. You know, I, I was texting Joe to remind him if he remembered the game that we combined for 50 points. You remember that game, Joe? It was, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, what I'm really saying is that was the 12th man. Uh, it's funny looking at the stat sheets that Ballinger posted from, you know, the Final Four program. And, you know, I, I did average two points a game, so I did contribute. But uh, what, what I really was was at the, the front – front cheerleader I was the biggest fan you know I got to sit there courtside and be a part of this team and it was uh what I remember was just how much fun we had it was so much fun even practicing was fun and, and maybe maybe it was because I like to run and, and just play sports but uh I don't really remember anything but just really enjoying the team atmosphere the camaraderie and and like Sam nailed it on the head all the the families that supported was all a lot behind the scenes that were poured into us. Um, just even the dinners, every single game day was like a whole day event. Where did you I, guys? I do, where did you guys do yeah. meals? We, we, we did beef of Brady's our first year, or like the, the first, you know, in two, 99, 2000. and then o o and one was Kyle's place, yeah. right? Or am I doing that backwards? No. Yeah, you no, know, you got it right. Time. You got yeah. it right. Yeah. Kyle's misconnect. Spaghetti, all that spaghetti we eat, and then go play. We'd be like, oh, <laughs> dying, but it's so yeah. good. So much is, support came from the Canucks. Though. We wouldn't have had the season we would have had if it wasn't for the Canucks. They were such a huge piece, you know. Absolutely, I, I absolutely love those folks. I, I wish we could connect with them and just say thank you. But you know, to John's credit, he took a lot of crap. I mean, he was. <laughs> 
you know, for a smaller guy in stature, he, he was strong internally, I think. Because I remember, John, a few times, man, we'd give you a good rough and, uh, you know, <laughs> case of it, you know, and you would come back at it, you know. And, oh, I, yeah. and I think that type of stuff builds that camaraderie. And we were just closer because of that because you knew – we didn't need mean anything about it. We were, it's just we were just some guys that you know playing a game that we loved, and uh, you bring it back at us just as much as we gave it. And, you know, and you were a great piece of that. You know, and I don't want you to think you weren't because you were a That's thoroughbred right. of Bayshore. And sometimes I feel like with me, Joe, and Brandon's case, uh, us coming in, we may have taken over some spots from like Micah or Nick or anybody else, but you know, people like yourself accepted us and treat us like family, you know, and I think thanks to you and, yeah. you know, that unforeseen leadership, you helped us gel, you know, you accepted us and made us that type of family. So thank you. No, that's and awesome. Give me the, say. the nonstop comedy too. Like, yeah, yeah you're funny. <laughs> I feel yeah. like, I <laughs> give us some but, comedy. Uh, give us some comedy. We'll, we'll go to Jared and then we'll come back uh, to Joseph and, and Brandon. Give us some of the comedy that occurred oh, with him. That's geez. been one of the great things about these podcasts. <laughs> the story. Tell us oh, some. Oh man, story. I mean, there's a couple that come to mind. PG, I don't bro. know. I don't know. Was PG. that soccer? <laughs> it might have been on the soccer team with uh with with, with Coach Kagi. But uh, man, I, I'm thinking for that season, it was a it was three years straight of comedy. I mean, it was <laughs> everywhere we went, we got into something somehow man i don't want to throw too much I'll, under there. I'll, I'll tell you one with <laughs> there you go yeah coach dibble, coach dibble had a, had a habit he would say hey like three or four times hey, hey, hey when he's hey. looking right at you you're like what what i, I heard you the first time hey 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 hey, 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 hey. so hey. i don't know what happened but no ask, somehow, let me ask you guys this do you remember coach valdez million dollar move five cent shot yeah. <laughs> that was his thing. That's a 40-year-old saying. That's a 40-year-old yeah. saying. Yeah. He would tell me all the time. He's like, you know what, Sam? You're a football player playing basketball. You, know, you got a million dollar <laughs> move, but a five cent shot. And I'd be like, and you know, we're at that time, we're winning. And I'm like, okay, coach, let's keep trying our best, you know. And coach Dibble, you know, Gosh, you'd think he'd had a heart attack at every single practice, every single game. You know, if I went behind the back twice in a row, you're out. You couldn't yeah. do anything crazy. You couldn't do it. You like crazy. to put a little bit of a little bit of flair on it, though, Sam. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> Sam likes to razzle the dazzle. Dazzle. It was, yeah, yeah, was, 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 was pushed to the front of the rim, like swish him in, and Dibble used to hate that. Like he was the glass. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. is funny. Hey, I want to jump in and get uh, Joseph and Brandon. Uh, Joseph, do you have a memory of that first loss against Braden Christian by one? Is that a, is that a game we should have won? It seems like, yes. Most uh, definitely, you... most definitely. I mean, I, I don't know how great my memory is about that game, but I remember that the dude was in the corner and Nick Bounge came out and he just caught back like he was trying to tomahawk the ball like outside of the gym. <laughs> Shot the three, fouled him. Went in. I think I was standing around top of the key because I was just I, I just remember watching. I was like, I can't believe that went in. I can't believe that. I, everything that led up to that, like we were handling that team with no problem. And they made some kind of crazy comeback towards the end. Kind of how it it, it it plays back in my head. And uh it was early in the season. I think we were what, maybe four and no, six no, and then we had that that first loss, and then we just yeah. rattled off like something crazy. That's exactly right. I mean, I, I think I won, looks like 20 games in a row, maybe 20 yeah. or more. So uh, that's exactly right. What are your memories, Joseph, before we go to Brandon, what are your memories of Coach Dibble? I mean, Dibble is a beloved character in Bayshore history. What are your memories of him? Did we lose him? Yeah, he, he was great. He was always fired up. Um, can you hear me or no? I can hear you. Yeah, we're good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hello? Good. you're good. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I just, I... Oh, we lost them. Let's go to let's go to Brandon. I'm sure Joseph will be right back. Brandon, what are your memories of Coach Dibble and your your relationship with Dibs? What was that like? I had a, I think I had a pretty good relationship with Dibs. I I liked him a lot when um he got let's say let go or whatever. That was the reason why I left. You know, just because I yeah. felt like he deserved to be there. He deserved to to have 
whatever he was doing on the side because whatever he was doing, it was working, you know? You believe, um, even with Rollins' departure as a senior, do you believe right. if you guys had come back that you would yeah. have been to the Final Four and maybe even won the state title? Definitely, I think so, you know. We would have had a squad. Kyle, if Kyle I, comes I, back, Brandon comes yeah. back, I come back. I mean, that's um, – I, I was there, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, the says the yeah, same thing. Yeah, Miller. You know? Yeah. No, that's right, T.J. Miller. Connect says yeah, Valdez, the, the centerpiece Valdez too. Yeah, right. Center, yes. Even oh, dude, I forgot about him. Yeah. Big man. Yeah. 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 Brooks still there. So I think so. I think we had enough pieces. Definitely. I mean, we might not have beat everybody by 80, but you know, yeah. like we would have been, we would have been back there for sure. Good um, fundamentals. Yeah, I think yeah. that Kyle Connect says I, I was, many times the same I thing. He would have returned uh, if the Dibble had returned. So Kyle yeah, but does anybody know how Kyle did at plant? I I left after the Afghanistan 2001 thing, but I don't know how Mikey Williams and that point guard Tyler and uh, Kyle and them did at plant. You know, did they make state? I don't know if they made the state. They they were balling though. Yeah, they did. Yeah, there was a team Lakewood. Lakewood from St. Pete was super strong and and knocked them out. Oh really? Lakewood has some that. ballers. We played that Lakewood team in a tournament. Joseph and I. So I, we went over there and we had played them in, um, in just outdoor ball. And then we went up with them at a hoop it up tournament and they surprised <laughs> us. That St. Pete team had some really good, strong ballers at, at Lack, uh, Lakewood. Absolutely. Jared, tell us, uh, so I got a little bit from Brandon and, and Joseph, but I, uh, let's see if we can get some from you. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with Coach Dibble. I mean, Dibble, of course, is a legendary figure. Tell us what you Yes. Think. So in, in two, 2001 was a rough year for me. That was the year my dad passed away. My father passed away just a few months after we went to state. I, my dad was in the hospital when 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 we went to state. Um, so that year was that year was tough. And I remember very distinctly Dibble coming to me multiple, multiple times. Uh, don't get emotional. Making sure I had, you know, if it was five bucks in my pocket, make sure. I, I remember the guy brought me a sandwich. He he asked me, he goes, you know, do you need time away from basketball? Is this something I, you know, I pretty much told him, I think this might be the only thing getting me through right now is being this focused and putting out all my energy into basketball. But um, I can't thank that man enough for all the small things that, you know, I hope, you know, that to him, they might've just been, you know, just being nice. But at that time, boy, it was, it really meant a lot to me. Um, I, I, I loved his style of coaching. I, I'm very disappointed that he, that he, uh, that he left. It was, it was heartbreaking to me. And he, he called me and tried to get me to go to Tampa Baptist. And my only reason I stayed was I know that my dad would have wanted me to stay and graduate from Bayshore. So I, I, I did that. So Cause yeah, that was been, a, yeah. Cause you had been there so long. I mean, that's yeah. probably, you're exactly right. Uh, honoring what your father's wishes would have been, uh, yeah. But yeah, Dibble, I mean, I got online here. We've got several pe people watching the show. And John Harville, who is a what we call an original gangster from the 80s, uh, Dibble is a legend, exclamation point, he's uh, quoting online. Um, I want to start turning now towards the postseason. I'm looking at y'all's record here, and it looks like about 23 in a row. Uh, there's a lot. Admiral Farragut got even, beat you by two. Uh, and then you had an overtime loss with Berkeley, which you had beaten Berkeley by 15 earlier. Man. Uh, so now we go into the postseason and you humiliate everyone in the district tournament. I don't know why we even need to talk about that. <laughs> the, most, the most important game I want to talk about for all us old timers is Tampa prep Bay conference championship game. So we'll start with uh, Joseph, go to Brandon, then Sam. That, that was a game you were down double digits. You come back and win by nine. Tell us about that experience. Tell us about game day. Was it was your girlfriend there? Were you motivated? Were you nervous? Tell us about that particular game because it's important to all of us. Joseph? Yeah. So when we played those big teams, the Berkeley Prep, the Admiral Farragut, I used to always get butterflies before those games. Nervous, thinking about, all right, am I going to come out, play good? Am I going to be flat? Am I going to be ready? You know, what's the outcome? Um, but then when we tipped off and we started playing ball, all that went away, and it was just down to the game plan. We're pressing, we're running. We're pressing, we're running. We're scoring, we're pressing, we're playing D. Um, especially against that that Tampa prep team, I remember that we knew they had three players that they were pretty much going to run through. They're big. Um, I think it was like Andrew Andrew Frazier's a little brother or something like that. And then they had they had a 
they had a little swing guard too. Um, and we were pretty much, you know, I can't remember exactly how they were getting all their points. I, I feel like it, it was just kind of off some sloppy defense. They wouldn't really have one certain player that was killing us or anything like that. And then in halftime, you know, no one was hanging their head. I remember we knew we could beat that team and we were ready to come out in the second half and put it to them. And that's, that's what's happened. You know, they didn't see it coming because they thought they had us in the bag. But I can remember distinctively that when we were in that locker room, we knew we had them and we knew we could beat that team. And then when we came out, we showed it in the second half. Yeah, I mean, that's exact. That's just that's so so great to hear for so many of us uh, going through the Bayshore history. Brandon, what are your thoughts? Down double digits, you come back and win. We're here with the, the legendary figures of the 2001 State Final Four team, the Dibble Renaissance era. Brandon, tell us about that game because it matters so much to so many people. Yeah, it, it mattered a lot to me. Um, coming from Tampa Catholic, I, I was already rivals with Tampa Prep. Uh, David Smith, the center, I actually played AAU ball with him when I was like 13 and 14. So I always knew he was going to be really good, but I, I wanted to beat him. You know, they were the favorites. And, you know, they, like you said, they had a lot, of, they were bigger than us. David six five, Shane Thornton was like six four. So you know, so uh, after we were down to them, it was like I just didn't want to. I, I didn't want to leave anything. I wanted to leave it all out on the court, you know. And I know all of, everybody did, you know. We, if we were going to lose that game, it was going to be um, not because of the lack of effort, you know. So I feel like every possession mattered. We took care of the ball. We played harder defense. We got stops. We made key free throws. You know, we did everything that, that we had to do to, to win that game, pretty much. Yeah. That's excellent. I mean, that game, I mean, Bayshore had not won the Bay Conference title in six or seven years. Uh, the, Tampa Prep had surpassed us at that point. I mean, Bayshore's do dominated Tampa Prep from 80 to 94, 95. When Andrick Frazier transferred in the mid-90s, it sort of the balance shifted against us. And then you guys, as Jared said, saved the legacy. We haven't forgot about you, John Michael. We're coming soon. We're going to go Sam, then Jared, then John Michael. Sam, what were your thoughts about that, what everyone considers a historic game in Bayshore history? You know, it was tough. I thought we had a better record, and we had to go to their place and play. And uh, not only that, you know, we had played with some of their guys at Hoop It Up tournaments and such, and I knew they had a gritty point guard. They had bigger players. Uh you know, they just had an advantage. You know, Casey Sanders had played ball there, uh, Duke, Duke alumni. You know, they had a lot. And you guys are referencing another guy that was a Tampa legend. But every, every team we played did not know about Tampa, right? Even though we had the second leadest, leading score in the county, nobody knew who Joe Rollins was. Even though I was averaging 17, Brandon was averaging like 15, uh, Jared was – phenomenal point guard you know if if assist and the small things matter he'd be right up there with the rest of the accolades that everybody accounts for but nobody knew who we were coming we were like the ghost and i think tampa prep fell to that you know i thought oh here comes this small team little team from bayshore we're gonna roll over them and nobody saw that we were this disciplined athletic gritty 2-2-1 defense we cover the gaps you're not gonna get past us and you know, not only that, the fundamentals of we know each other, we're going to hit our free throws. I think there was a point in the game after halftime, Dibble was extremely mad at me. I come off a screen and I hit a three pointer. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 I, I hit a three pointer that was like eight feet from the three point line. And he's like, <laughs> oh, and I launch this thing. And, I and I'm telling myself, if I hit this, this is going to be the turning point. And that thing goes in. And next thing you know, we're just rolling. And I remember hitting Joe down low on a pass, and they didn't even see it coming. Boom, it hits. Then Kyle hits a dunk, and then Brandon's hitting a layup, and Jared's hitting a shot. I mean, it just keeps coming and coming and coming, and people didn't see us coming. We were like the ghost of the Tampa uh, High School League, if you say. That's really – that's such a great description and, and great memories from that moment, and thank you for sharing them. Jared and then John Michael, I, I want to talk about this game. I can always talk about a game with Tampa Prep. So uh, you had a front row seat for a lot of it with your older brother. You grew up at Bayshore. Um, 
this game really mattered. 88 to 79 Bay Conference uh, Championship game. The banner returns home. You guys defeat the mighty Tampa Prep Terrapins. Tell us what are your thoughts about those moments uh, 20 years ago? Yeah, my memories. So I remember when we first came out, we ran as we're running out. I remember looking over and seeing people laugh laugh at us because they had these huge guys and we came out you know our small we, we did it all, i think on purpose and again our smallest to our tallest guy was you know maybe five you know five inch difference as opposed to these other teams but we came out there i remember seeing them laughing at us and thinking i'm ahead man i don't think they know who we are really you know like but uh um we are and the other thing was uh their big man came over he patted me on my head or something like that and i was like all right man like you're just gonna put fuel on the fire here and uh, yeah, I remember uh, Sam hit that three. I, I swear we had like an eight to two or 10 to two swing there. Sam hit yeah. that three. Kyle stole like an inbound or, or right it right from the press, uh, kicked it over. I hit a three and we we had like a, a, a 10 to two, I think, turn right there at that fourth quarter. It went it went crazy. And just everybody erupted. I remember this when that game was over, that was one of the loudest buzzers I ever heard in my head and listened to the booing and the people just in like, you know, all their fans couldn't believe it. And all those people that were laughing were sitting there, you know, just stuck. So it was, it was a great feeling. That was one of my best, you know, that and R.J. Henley was my favorite two games, uh, I think, of all time. We're about to get to that when we're getting real close. Uh, John Michael, like with Jared, you had a front row seat to so much Bayshore Christian history. Uh, Tampa Prep used to be our, our homecoming opponent. Things turned when Andrick Frazier transferred, and they are the kings of the hill. You've hear, heard all these descriptions we weren't supposed to beat them, uh, but you did. Tell us about, not just the game, but tell us about some of your, was there something funny Dibble said, an assistant coach? Do you remember what your girlfriend was telling you that day? Or were you allowed to have a girlfriend? Because I mean, you, you a so tell us a little bit about that day. No, no dating. <clears throat> I was, uh, I was too busy doing sports, but I, um, what I remember specifically about that game was that I think that was probably the first and maybe only time we went down at halftime or it went into halftime down. And that was a very weird feeling for, for me. Like, you know, I have nothing I can do about it, but I'm watching from the bench. Like, come on guys, what's going on here? Uh, what I think I reflect on that game the most was this, that we, Sam mentioned grit. We never changed our game. We kept pressing. We kept uh, pushing the ball and things just started clicking. But I remember, Joe, I don't know if you remember, I, I talked to you after that game, like, how do we win? And we were kind of puzzled because it just kind of came together. Uh, and, you know, I think that seeing it unfold in real time, the, uh, the way that we went from down to up so quickly was was very unusual, the, the amount of pendulum and momentum shift. So, yeah, I th honestly, I, I feel like you guys might beat me up for this. <laughs> They, uh, I think that they were the better team, but I, I really do think that that night we uh, we just surprised them and we we stayed in our in our game. We didn't let it phase us, and uh, you know as a result we got the W. That's so hard for me to agree with. I mean, I, I wasn't there obviously, but I got a lot of the videotape. Some of it's on the YouTube channel, uh, and of course I knew Dibble and I scouted you guys. I mean, they had some great players. I mean, that was a, a good Tampa Prep team, but you guys were a superpower. I mean. You yeah. had super, if you guys lived in the current internet era of recruiting, you'd have four or five division one signees. I mean, that's no a, doubt. I mean, <clears throat> used to say, uh, he, he used to say, guys, we have a team that if we structure plays, we, we could have five, five guys on this team that are, are double digit night in, night out, 20 plus point game average. It really, anybody the starters and you guys didn't have to run, bench. you guys didn't have to run plays, you were turning them over for offense from your athleticism. I mean, who needs a play? It was. Uh, I, I don't want to keep you guys all night. We've got two sections of the show I want to cover. One is that great home game that you won to go to the final four against RJ Henley. I mean, there's stories of people not able to get in. So somebody would run outside and yes, for four cell phones, I guess, and run outside <laughs> and tell them the score, you know, at each dead ball. We'll start with Joseph Brandon and go around the circle again. Um, Joseph, that R.J. Henley game at home, you guys won 66 to 52. It improved your record to 33 and three. Um, tell us about that game, because apparently everybody was hanging from the rafters. It was a sellout packed house. Yeah, so my memories of that game, um, I, I just remember seeing 
like twin towers walking into the gym. They had two dudes that looked like it seemed like they were seven footers. Um, I saw another point guard that I had saw at a five star camp in Philly, which is pretty, pretty crazy. I was like, it's such a small world. And uh, I knew he was he was pretty good. He was one of their their star players. Um, and it just seemed like at the tip off that it wasn't going to be. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. No problem. No problem. Let's see if he comes back real quick. If not, we'll go to Brandon. Let's see. We almost got him. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, so sorry about that. Yeah, no so it, it just seemed like it was going to be a tall task. And then again, like I said, when we were playing teams that I felt like, okay, it's going to be tough. That's when I had the the, the butterflies, you know, feeling nervous, not knowing what, what was going to happen. I remember specifically that what kind of – fired me up and, and turned the game for me and, and got everything kind of hype was I had an and one against one of the bigs. I went into the bucket and he either jumped or I head faked and jumped into him, threw it up, got the and one, got hype. Okay, we can beat these dudes. And we just started playing our game and they couldn't run with us. They couldn't hang with us. Oh, we lost Joe again. That was a really good story. We're going we to to Brandon, out. and then we'll – oh, there he is. Is he back? Okay, let me see if I can get him back on. Yeah. Joe, Hello, you good? Can you hear me? Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No um, so, yeah, so that's when I remember we, yeah, we could play with him, and then we played our game. You know, we were pressing him, running, and, and just – we got the W in the end. And it was a surreal feeling when that buzzer went off and we were up by so many. You know, what I like in that, in that game is especially is that it wasn't something where, oh, man, it's going to come down to the wire. It was kind of like we knew for, like, a good final yeah. minute. And <laughs> yeah. you could kind of soak it in and, yeah. and be smiling and looking around and taking it all in. And, and yeah, it, it was slammed in there. That was wild. That's that was really definitely cool. that. Yeah, that was great. That is absolutely glorious when you get to enjoy it and and uh, the crowd is, is cheering as as time is winding down. Uh, John Arville, again, one of the original gangsters, says, you guys are true Bayshore guys, he says online. we got several people watching, so that's pretty cool. Going to go to Brandon and then Sam. Brandon, uh, what do you remember about uh, pregame locker room? Uh, do you remember anybody that, that was unable to get into the gym to see the game? Because apparently <laughs> there was lots of people on the red top. Tell us your memories of that famous 66-52 destruction of R.J. Henley, which took you to the Final Four. I just remember the excitement. You could just feel like the electricity in the building, you know? Every, I don't, we didn't even have to say anything. We just all knew. I think those games like Tampa Prep and Admiral Farragut where we went against some real big guys, I think that helped us. And except this time we were, we were home, you know, and we had our fans and it was packed. So we weren't, even though they might have been bigger, I didn't. I didn't really feel like an underdog at any point in time. You know that game, and like he said, that last like when we knew we won. You know, and you're still on the court. You know, you want to jump out of your skin, but yeah, we walk around smiling. We're, we're feeling it. We're ready to celebrate already. You know, and that was that was just an amazing feeling being in that building, being in that position. You know, where you already know that that you won. That you, now you're going to state. You know which is a dream for, I think, any anybody that ever played basketball right. has to go to state. That's exactly right, and and that's just – it brings tears to my eyes hearing you guys talk about this stuff. Sam, uh, there's nothing like being in Ramey Arena as the clock is counting down and your opponent is defeated. Tell us your memories of that, what is one of the greatest wins and greatest moments in Bayshore Christian history, the victory over R.J. Henley. Tell us what are your memories. Well, sir, I just got to say uh, – you know, it reminded me of my freshman year. My freshman year, me and Joe played uh, JV ball for Robinson. It was highly competitive. But our varsity had two seniors that were uh, – one was n ranked number 32 in the nation, Desmond Allison. And the other guy, uh, Cid Cedric Powell, was up there too. He actually yeah. got a full ride to a Florida Atlantic. Right. But they bring in – I think it was the conference finals. They bring in the Graham brothers. Mm -hmm. So Robinson's arena was rocking. One of the celebrities that showed up, uh, was an old baseball player from the Tampa area. I can't remember the right fielder's name, but if I said his name, you would have remembered who he was. I mean, it was just rock. It reminded me of that because as basketball players, we couldn't even inbound the ball. 
I mean, there was people just all around us yeah. and it was just like out the door. Um, very proud of that moment. I am so honored to be able to relive that as a senior, not just getting to see that as a freshman, but being able to fulfill that as a senior. Um, not a lot of people get to do that, you know, and I'm honored and I'm grateful and Bayshore provide that and the people around us like yourself and you guys. And, you know, I can't be thankful enough. So thank God. And it was a great moment. Very great moment for Bayshore. Well, thank you, Sam. And you're exactly right. Great moment for Bayshore because it had been a few years. I mean, a lot of people were starting to question whether or not the dynasty could return to the final four. And uh, old guys like myself were watching y'all from afar and just watching this unbelievable. You guys are legends of the hardwood at Ramey Arena for that 2001 season and bringing back that banner and such a great run. Jared, what were your memories, a girlfriend, teacher, and you told us about your father's situation. There's got to be yeah. a lot of emotions that go into this moment. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, there was a lot of emotions with that. I wish my dad could have been there for that. I know that he would have loved to have seen that. Uh, just as, you know, he, he was proud. He had our little newspaper up in his hospital room and telling all the nurses, you know, that's my son, that's my son. So it's very emotional for that. Picking back on Sam, the amount of people in the corner over by like where the concession is where you first come in. So like when we would go down to the other side of the court, people would kind of breathe and expand out into the court. And then as soon as we come back, they'd all have to like, you know, suck back into the corner. I mean, it really was chaos. I'm sure there was some fire codes definitely being broken there that night. Yeah, yeah, there was way uh, that place at the end of that game was shaking. And I mean, shaking, you could visibly see the roof shaking from the roaring. And Mr. Matheny, I think his name was the, the old uh, Bible uh, Bible teacher there was popping all those balloons. That's where he was at my back, scared the heck out of me, but he's sitting up there, you know, going nuts. The Bible teacher, ever it was, it was uh, Joe going 13 for 13 from the free throw line. As I still, I still say it is, uh, I, I remember that's what we knew at the end because they kept fouling him and kept fouling him. So I think that was probably eight minutes, nine minutes there at the end of the game. That's, that what, we that's, knew what, great, won. that's what great champions do. They close it out. Yep. 13 for 13. I mean, that's just legendary. I'm sorry to yep. interrupt. Please keep going. No, no. And that's what I remember is we had all that time because Joe kept going to the free throw line. And we're like, we got this in the bags. So like every time, you know, it's just you're sitting back there, your heart's pounding out of your chest. And it's, a, again, it's what you play your whole life for is that, you know, that moment, getting getting to the final four. And we knew we got them. And so it was a very proud, proud moment for everybody there. That's really awesome. We're going to go now to John Michael, and then we'll circle back for our final round of questions. And John Michael, I, when we do these podcasts, we've got about 35, 40 hours now of content for Bayshore graduates. I always tell the story that, um, when I'm down, when I was downtown working in the '90s, hey, what do you, you do for a living? Blah blah blah. Where'd you go to school? And and I when I say Bayshore, they say like, oh wow, that was the greatest basketball program ever. You played at Bayshore. Bayshore matters. So um, tell us what you, being a Bayshore lifer, remember from those moments in that 2001 regional final to go to the Final Four. Yeah, well, speaking of being a base for life or ha having grown up, it, it wasn't just kindergarten to 12th grade that I attended. It was five from, from zero to five being in the church, too. And we lived there. I've heard my sister on podcast before. I mean, we were there for Wednesday night church, Sunday, Sunday night church, five days of school, playing sports year round. I mean, it was it was so much more than just um, a school. It was it was a home. And, you know, Talking about the rafters shaking and how electric the gym was, I, I always say that this the the heartbeat of Bayshore is in the red top. The soul is in in the gym. Oh, yes. And you know, after the game, everyone pouring out to the red top, everyone hugging. You know, it's just uh like you didn't want it to end. And it was uh it was emotional to see because I do remember being young and seeing the Jonathan Johnson era and, and some of these other you know the, the Elijah Piazzas and the even younger. When I'm five, six years old, like I just knew we mattered. I knew that we had a great basketball team, and Valdez was at the helm. And it was uh, it was very neat to to in a small way be a part of that and and be on the wall. You know, my pictures up on the wall. Oh, well, that's right. And uh, yeah, I, I think what I remember most from that game was two things. One, 
we get a lot of credit for being an offensive juggernaut. We just were well conditioned and fast. We ran. We ran that court. The, the teams that would make the mistake it would press us, and we would blow through them, wear them down. Uh, but when you go back and look at our score, even in the playoffs, R.J. Henley, R.J. Henley was a dominant team. They had a great yeah. season. We held them to 52 points. I think uh, a lot of people don't realize how good we were defensively. We got into that 1-3-1 uh, zone a lot, which worked very well for us because we were so fast. We could cover the three, you know, keep it tight in the middle with having small bodies. But the secret sauce is uh, Kyle. Kyle, six foot two. He surprised everybody. Oh, and, I, I, and I could be wrong, but I, I think all but probably one or two games, that kid won the jump ball. And he's going up against monsters. Yeah. Here comes this skinny skinny white boy just jumping out of the gym. And, uh, man, and he would dunk hard. He, he had that play where we would inbound him. He'd never bring his arms box, down. He'd just box, box. The box, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Kyle, Kyle deserves a lot of credit, too, for, you know, he, imagine me 6'2 against some of those guys on the inside. He's outweighed. <laughs> Out, outgunned and uh he held his own very well so yeah I, I, that's what i remember is, is just being impressed a lot about kyle hanging with those big guys we hadn't seen teams with that much size very often uh so yeah it was it was a great win great win there's there's great video of connect getting a monstrous breakaway transition dunk in the final four game that was on the channel 13 uh news and it's, we got it on our YouTube uh, page. He was kind enough to put it up for us. So, yeah, he was he was a great player. I wish we had him on tonight and a, gr and a huge component to y'all's success. Uh, we're going to go around for a final time. We've kept y'all for an hour, and we greatly appreciate it. We are here with legendary hardwood names that made up the 2001 uh, State Final Four run for Bayshore Christian. Call it the Dibble Renaissance because a lot of people thought the dynasty was on its last legs, and these guys gave it a rebirth. Uh, and returned uh, that important Bay Conference banner home, a district title home. 33 wins, you're 33 and oh, wait, there's another Facebook post. Freddie Tomasello, another old Brandon Boys 80s guy, says, I would have loved to see these guys play and to have played with them. Punch you in the mouth type of players, led by one of my favorite coaches, Coach Dibble. So uh, Freddie's giving you all props there on the Facebook page. Uh, Thanks, Freddie. Yeah, absolutely, Fred. Uh, uh, glad for you guys, uh, for you watching. So let's let's go around for one last time. I'd like to hear your final thoughts on your career at Bayshore. And if you didn't finish at Bayshore, uh, make sure to point out why. And I think a lot of people will say they, they took away my coach. I think it was the main reason for a lot of people. Um, Joseph, you played three years there. Tell us your favorite teacher, um, something non-basketball, as we wrap up the 2001 State Final Four run show. Okay, my favorite teacher was definitely Mr. Piazza. Mr. Piazza was a great teacher um, and a great person. And he, he made, you know, he made it fun. Um, and he was very intelligent. And he was able to teach really well where you understood. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big time skill because some teachers just teach and you either get it or you don't and they could care less. But he was very good at, um, you know, dealing with different individuals and, and knowing on what level they needed help and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed his classes. Um, so that was, that was my favorite teacher. Um, and what'd you say? You said something not for non-basketball? Just, just whatever you would like to wrap up with your thoughts from that era, that basketball era. Oh man. Um, I, I wouldn't like to have grown up at Bayshore. Yeah, we lost you, Joe. We lost you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Joe, we lost you. We lost you. After you take your shower, you can get minutes. I'll give you 30. I think your girl's Bluetooth okay, on. <laughs> That's right. I think you're right. Happening. <laughs> okay, hey, hey. Okay, I'm there back. There you go. My, my, wife pulled, my wife pulled in and the Bluetooth connected to the card. <laughs> that is oh, funny. Lord. All right. What's the last thing y'all heard me say? You wouldn't want to grow up at Bayshore, but what happened, to, what happened after that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just because the three years that I had, they were so amazing. I would have liked to have had more and been able to, to enjoy that even more because it, it was just so amazing. The time I was there, 
Um, when I was there as a sophomore, I didn't get much playing time. They had a lot of established seniors. They had really good juniors, and I was still trying to figure everything out. Then in our junior year, I kind of had to take more of a leader role, and we were still, you know, a younger team trying to trying to gel. A lot of teams were were beating us that we felt like we could have beat, and then everything clicked our senior year. And that time we spent together, that time outside of just being on the court is what helped a lot. And uh, like John Michael was talking about, game days was like a whole event. It definitely was. It, it, was, just, it was just a really good time. Um, I remember being in the little courtyard at lunch, you know, and it was since it was only so many people in your grade, like you, you, you see that same little family and it was just all your brothers and sisters. Like you knew everybody. Everybody was cool with each other. It was no real oddballs. It was just one big family. And I had a, a really good time. Wish we would have won it all. But, you know, winning that Bay Conference championship, winning in our own gym and making it to state, those were two huge wins. And if we'd have played that team in the seven-game series, gentlemen, sweet, 4-1. Y'all got the one and caught us off guard, but we're going to wax y'all four straight. So, you know, I don't have any um, any bad feelings towards anything or – any man, I wish this, I wish that. I, I enjoyed everything. Um, just wish I'd be able to watch it all back. I think Kyle actually has takes. He's trying to get it um, to where it's not on VHS because I haven't seen one of those in 20 years. Just like, you know. got, yeah, y'all got to talk to your boy because he's got all the video. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Got, he sends me got... little clips every now and then. His dad, cool. his dad. Yeah, yeah. We've got, uh, we've got one complete game from 2001 against Temple Heights at home. So if you want to look at that on YouTube, that full game is on there. Uh, yeah, I'd love to rest, check it out. The rest we got are clips that Kyle has sent us. And again, we can't thank you enough for being with us tonight, Joseph. It's, an, it's my honor and privilege to get to see you and talk to you. And what a legend of the hardwood that you were for Bayshore Christian. So thank you for all that you did for us. Um, Gonna go now to Brandon. Appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. Brandon, what are your final thoughts uh, from that that wonderful moment, that that wonderful 2001 magical season, 33 and four and final four run? What are your final thoughts? You know, that was the only team that I ever played for where, like when I got there, they welcomed me with open arms. And, you know, we were talking about Kyle and, you know, how we would have dinner at his house and, we just always had fun. We used to play this game. I don't know if you guys remember this, but we would lower the rim at Kyle's house and we would play all dunks, no yeah. shots. We called it dunk ball. You know, and I told Kyle, you know, if it wasn't for playing dunk ball in your yard, I probably would have never made to play slam ball. You know, <laughs> you know I, I had so much fun with these guys. Like I felt like we were all brothers, you know, like, I would even uh, say my boy Sam, you know, like, yeah, that's my brother right there. You know, I would call him the N-word if we weren't on this podcast. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, man, like, I, I had so much fun with these guys. And, um, you know, I really wish I could have. I'm like, like Joe, you know, I wish I could have been there for more than I was. If I could do it all over, I would have stayed there. You know, I ended up going to a much bigger school. It's like 3,000 students there. And. You know, I still played well. We we made it to district finals, and I still was able to score an average 20 points a game, but I would have rather scored less and made it further and had more fun with uh, guys that, like, don't have a selfish bone in their body, you know. And, um, not to take shots at anybody else I played with or nothing like that. It just wasn't about that. It wasn't about one person scoring 30 points or 40 points. It happened sometimes, but, you know, we all were all, all about the – about the team we all were on the same page you know and I wish I could have experienced that more than once you know and hindsight is great because you could say man I was a part of something special but if I would have known that you know I could have that for two more years I definitely would have chosen that so I mean just the companions the the brotherhood that we had you know uh winning of course <laughs> winning of course I'm sure helped some of that too you know like when we're we're when we're winning we're having fun, right? So um, I had a great time the entire time I was there. Uh, the school welcomed me, you know. Um, I was a new student, and I was able to make, you know, homecoming king for my grade as soon as I moved there. I know there was an article that they wrote that about, and 
when that was my first time being in the newspaper and I can't remember who did, but they, they made it to a gold plaque and gave it to me. The school oh. did. Oh, that's and nice. I felt like, man, this is the best place in the world for them to go out of their way to, to turn a newspaper article into a gold platform. I still have that hanging up in my dad's house. That's really way. nice. That's really yeah. nice. So, where, did you go, where did you go after Bayshore? Was it Gaither? Yeah, I went to Gaither after. And okay. 6A. Big difference yeah. from 1A, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. So, and the, the other thing was Coach Dibble, I just I just love playing for him. You know, he, he would challenge me and push us, but he was also put us in positions to succeed. And I didn't have that at Gaither. You know, like a lot of the stuff that I did there, it was off of offensive rebounds or, you know, it wasn't because, you know, we would draw something up to get me involved. You know, I didn't really feel like I necessarily fit in there, you know. So I really, I really appreciated Coach Dibble. And that was part of the reason why that I left was because I felt like I wanted to play for him, you know. So I will say this, Coach. Uh, Kagi and Mrs. Kagi, you know, they came to my house and uh, tried to get me to come back, you know. And hindsight, I probably still should have went back. <laughs> uh, uh, hindsight makes many a genius, right? Um, yeah, it does. Like you said earlier, uh, Kagi ended up having a great uh, three or four year coaching run. We certainly okay. can't thank you enough. Uh, one of the legends of the hardwood <laughs> from the Bayshore 2001 State Final Four team. Thank you for being with us here tonight and for all that you've shared. Uh, what a great story. And Sam, we're going to turn to you. Favorite teacher or lasting memory? Any final thoughts on that unbelievable team that you played on back in 2001? Yeah, uh, I can't thank you, Brandon. Thank you. You were a great guy. And you know what, man? You had my back. Joe, you had my back. Thank you, brother. You, I followed you to Bayshore, and you will be my best friend till the day I die. Um, Jared? Thank you, man. You were always really good to me. Uh, I remember you put me in this chokehold one time before the game. It messed up my neck, but it taught me a good life lesson. <laughs> so I got into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so don't try that again. <laughs> Come on, man. You, your stature doesn't stay it, but, man, you are tough as nails, and you're one of the funniest guys I've ever met, man. And all you guys all together made it a great combination. And I came from a rough high school of Robinson. I didn't have a good upbringing and I had nothing, but you guys were the highlight of my high school. And I, and I can't thank you and everybody else around there enough. Thank you so much. Thank you for having the show, sir. Thank, thank you for you. letting us have a voice to have that out because I feel like a lot of times in history, we, we say that the stats and everything else, but we don't know the, the real stories, but there's some good stories out there. And if you ever have a chance to elaborate more on this, just let us know and I'll, I'll, I'm available. But there's an um, admin person, Miss Hoover, I would not have made it out of high school if it wasn't for Miss Hoover. And I didn't, I don't think she stayed with Bayshore much more because I had to go serve, but man, she helped me out through so many emotions and uh, just her guidance and her just being good to, with keeping me with God and just her love. You know, I really want to give a shout out to Jan Hoover because she kept me and Joe and some of the other guys together and she was so kind and loving she was a mother at the school when i was going through some hard times you could go to her and she was that outlet that you needed when you were having a hard time so jan hoover you are my rock if you're listening i thank you so very much and then the emotional highest high for me was the state when me and joe were sitting there we were both in tears it was it you know I knew at that point we had lost and then the ride was over and it just hurt so bad, you know, and I was texting Joe today. I, I said, man, any other place we would beat this team. This team wasn't on our level and it just hurt uh, tremendously. And I think about that to this day, even through my deployments and everything else, you know, I've never had the camaraderie, even in life and death situations that I had with these guys. I mean, just from uh, the things we used to do, the crazy pregame things and all the fun <laughs> and laughing and, and just staying at Kyle's house. I, you know, there was times I stayed at Brandon's house and the girls we dated and hang out together, me and Joe. Yeah. And, I mean, we could have violated each other in a disrespectful way, but we could always forgive each other because we were so close as brothers, you know, and I love you guys for that. And I thank you so much for that, you know, and I couldn't be, 
I, I couldn't be more grateful than to share this moment with you. So thank you, sir, for putting us on and letting us share our voice. Love you too, brother. Yeah, yeah much love to you guys. Yes, sir. Love you, buddy. It is my honor and privilege to be here with you guys. Without question, it's my honor and privilege. So thank you guys for sharing. We're going to go John Michael, and we're going to close up with uh, Jared. It's funny, John Michael, we haven't heard much about the final four game. Uh, it's funny how the memories are Tampa prep, the regional final against R.J. Henley. Uh, you know, I, I think we beat, or I think we played Grand Ridge as a team that beat us. Is that correct? Tell us your final, tell us, answer the question who we played, and then tell us your final thoughts for tonight. Yeah, it, it was Grand Ridge. And what's crazy is these guys have unbelievable memories. I was on, I was here on the court and I was over there and, you know, Kyle did this. And, you know, my memory just isn't that good, apparently. Or maybe it's different if you're in the game. But I, I think, uh, <laughs> That, that final four game was a blur to me. I would love to see a video because I still puzzle to this day, like what exactly happened? How they shut us down? What went wrong? I know foul, foul trouble was a big part of it. We were we winning have, at halftime by eight points. Mm. We brought in uh, we brought in the whole JV squad, Tommy, TJ. Uh, I remember them going into the game because people were in foul trouble. Yeah. You know, so I, I would love to know what happened that game, honestly. But, um, yeah, it, it's funny. Probably one of the more memorable moments that happened after that. Growing up, seeing Valdez, what he did, and always knowing that we just could never get that championship ring. We It was after that, that game. We got knocked out. Everyone was emotional, upset. And for whatever reason, my parents, Rick and Vicky, were walking out with Herman and, and, and Mrs. Valdez. And I'll never forget, but Mr. Valdez just turned around one last time at that Lakeland Civic Center, and, and he goes, this place is cursed. <laughs> and he, walked, he walked to the car, you know, yeah. but I, I realized all the heartbreak he'd been through. But you you look at the brackets, there's so much that goes into uh, championship season. You, know, you got to be good, you got to be gritty, but you also have a little bit of luck. If we go on the other side of the bracket, those two teams, as Joe would say, we would have waxed them, no problem. And I think if we had just been a little bit more comfortable having a game in our belt in that stadium, we weren't used to playing in big arenas like that, really. Right. With the open hoops, you know, everything was bolted onto the walls and to the rafters yeah. where we came from. So in single A ball, uh, yeah, it, I, I always wonder what would have happened, what could have been. But like like everyone said, you know, you hang your hat, head high. We have great memories. Get, get the Final Four banner, uh, a, lot of, a lot of special memories. Um, yeah, as far as, as teachers, so many stand out, especially when you got as many years as, as I do. <laughs> what, what I love about what Sam said is it was the entire staff that made it so special. They were there, and I would believe still are there today, those that, that choose to be a teacher at Bayshore faculty, not because they're getting rich, not because uh, anything, but God called them to be there, and, and they want to be there. To, to be able to say a teacher wasn't the most influential, but just someone that was an administrator was so impactful in my life that this lets you know from top to bottom, talk about a deep bench, how deep the bench is of the staff, uh, of how much they care for the individual. Um, but yeah, just a couple of quick ones. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Val, uh, Stokes at the time, I think she changed her name, Velez. Uh, Mrs. Lopez, uh, Mr. Piazza, he was all right. Uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously one of the greats. He taught me how to arm wrestle. And believe it or not, Jared, I can beat a lot of people arm wrestling. I sneak up on them. And yeah. I know the techniques. See, Mr. Valdez had, Mr. Piazza had the arm wrestling table in the room before class would start. We would, uh, we would arm wrestle. But yeah, it, it was, uh, there's so many names that, that rushed through my head, but the, those were the probably the three that stood out the most. That's really wonderful. And again, uh, we're getting ready to talk to Jared and can't thank you guys enough. I mean, legends of the hardwood, uh, Ramey Arena uh, heroes uh, for Bayshore Christian and returning the banners, returning the legacy and returning the glory to the school during that magical 2001 season. Uh, Jared, your thoughts on the, on the last row. I mean, it's funny how we sort of skipped over the yeah. final four game. Uh, Grand Ridge <laughs> is a traditional power. I remember when they won the 84 or 85 state championship game. Then Malone went on that long run in the 90s. Grand Ridge is always a superpower in basketball. So you face a legitimate, yeah. you know, 4A or five, it's 1A but or 2A, but it's, it's a high-level public school opponent. Uh, tell us your final memories, your favorite uh, moments at Bayshore as we wrap up. 
we beat ourselves that game. I don't know what, like Sam said, we were up and we weren't even playing that good and we were up. Uh, and then we just slowly, it was like watching the train, you know, I don't know. We just went off the tracks. I, I just what, I, again, probably our worst game all season just happened to happen, you know, in the state final four. Um, it was, it, it was, I don't know, man. I wish that we should have went and practiced at some open court like that. I think that really did throw us off. If we had those guys at home, I'm at a 20 point game. I, I, I don't see them. I really do. I wholeheartedly believe that we fell apart, not to mention that they, they planned that senior trip. So we had lost a couple players and then that's oh, why we brought on, up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A senior trip was planned during the final four. Yes. Who was in charge of that? Uh, it was Miss Brooks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, I believe I mean, that she that... had an official say in that. Um, I mean, that or it was lost a bunch of brain cells trying to process that. Yeah. Um, so we were missing, uh, I think, two or three. Did Nick Ballinger, does anybody remember yeah, if Nick Ballinger went? went? Nick went. I think Bailey went too. Yeah. We lost two of yeah. our seniors. I think it was three people we lost, but that we had to bring well, up. Probably Philip went. Yeah. I mean, they, they, these kids paid thousands of bucks in advance, no refunds, you know? So, I mean, their parents, I, I mean, I, for me, that's a no, no brainer where yeah, I'm my, going. My dad, day, my but. dad would have shot me if I would have gone on the senior trip. Over yeah, the final four. Same. Yeah. I would, I would have paid three grand, you know, easily right. half, happily for that. So yeah, as far as that game, you know, I guess we don't remember, or, you know, we don't want to talk about it because it, it was just, um, I think it really was our worst game of the entire season. We just happened to sh uh, not do well that game. <laughs> um, so at the that time, is the unofficial you know? Facebook page. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Was good, right. yeah, was good. A disclaimer, uh, disclaimer. Up. And um, so, Y back, hey, listen, you guys have done way better with the language than the guys from the <laughs> 80s last week on the baseball show. <laughs> yeah. Baseball show had the language flying. But go ahead, Jared. I'm sorry. Um, so, and then, so away from that game a little bit, the every one of these guys, Joe, Brandon, Sam, Kyle, John, all these guys, brothers, man. I mean, they were, we were, we were, we were family. We were the, the quintessential team. Like we, we, you know, like there's something there that I don't think there was any, many other teams, if that, that had what we had with that, there was any given night, any one of those guys could do damage five, six guys off our band could seriously go off and do damage at any given time. Like if we need, and it rotated, Joe was, I mean, obviously the, the, he, that guy, when he, it was weird to not see Joe on. I don't think there was many games where Joe wasn't on, you know, Play uh, playing with these guys, Kyle's defense, long arms, Brandon, just every, everybody. And John Michael, the man, the, <laughs> the man with the plan. Yes. And, uh, you know, the people like, you know, again, I, don't take nothing to, away from yourself, John, you, you push us and you, you were always there to support us. It means so much. That's what I mean by that, that unit, wow. even from one, number one to number 12, number four, whatever, however, man, 12, I think it was, it didn't matter. It, there wasn't in, in, uh, not, we weren't selfish. We didn't care if you went off for 25 points that night. That's, you know, that's what it was about. Being a point guard on that team was, y'all made my you know job pretty easy, man. You know, like I gotta get you the ball. You you're just on, you know. It's just and you find the guy and it can switch at the end of a quarter. It was just something that I've watched. Like being a baseball, I watched all those basketball games from fourth grade, fifth grade. I was in that gym watching those games, and I I saw a couple great teams, but I I truly think that we had that for the the actual word team. I don't know how many better there were for that. Show those hands one last time. I want to see this guy. This guy had massive hands. He was like five eight, and he had these hands that could calm the damn ball. And I was yeah. like that. Jared, tell us, you know, obviously the love that everybody has for your father. Real quick, because we're going to wrap up. Tell us, is there somebody administration or the staff uh, teaching that you remember most uh, from those days, or, or oh. a friend, or a friend outside of basketball, somebody who impacted your life from Bayshore? Man, you know, it, it, it's truly, a, it was a heck of a recipe they had there and the people that found themselves back. I mean, me and Mr. Kagey, my senior year, not, not, a, not in basketball, but he was, you know, the, the, me and that guy bonded every game we would, I mean, we, I felt like the old, like the old veteran on the team, you know, I had all the young guys and me and Kagey kind of, we, we talked about basketball, you know, outside of basketball, we, we would sit there and draw up little plays and talk about, you know, who's doing this and who's doing what it, 
just to have him for that. Um, I mean, a lot of them, man. That's the uh, Velez, Miss Velez, Miss Stokes. I love that lady. That lady was a, a godsend. She helped so many kids. I mean, personal friends of mine that I don't think they'd be either around today or they'd be in a bunch of trouble. And, uh, and I've seen her truly go out of her way for students more than more than the average miss lamb do you remember miss lamb i don't know yeah. if you remember miss lamb from back yeah. in the day but that lady was an angel so sweet just there was a different recipe for those those teachers that, that administration that staff volpe i mean volpe was one of the most that guy was i know but even that guy you know he he, he did what he could for all those kids he really did he went out of his way I love he it. did a lot of stuff behind the scenes and he but he was the dean when we were there so he kind of like for a little bit you know he was a little hard hardball but you know but uh the guy was <laughs> it's a great staff miss lopez again i hate to say all the same people john but you you, you nailed it on the head the great, great, the great great people yeah. <laughs> they really were they were it was something that was a family it, it wasn't you know some of these people you didn't they weren't your teachers they were they were like a a, a relative you know I was there all the time as well. I mean, that's, that was, so yeah, that, they felt more like family than an administration or teachers there. Well, it, it all comes through. Gentlemen, uh, we can't thank you enough. I know that the alumni that watch these shows really appreciate you taking an hour and a half of your time to share your memories of what was that magical Final Four run in 2001, the, the Dibble Renaissance. You guys made it all happen with your teammates. What comes through to me is family, um, how you're all, even if you hadn't seen each other in 20 years, you immediately uh, connect with your brother. Uh, and that, that is a, that is a Bayshore tradition. So many teams are like that. And it's such an honor and privilege to be here with you and to see that. So it's really moving uh, to see it. So much going on in the world today and to see the, the friendships togetherness uh, that you can see here on this podcast is, I really appreciate it. And uh, again, thank you for all those historic moments back in Tampa and Ramey Arena on the hardwoods in Tampa, making some high school memories that everybody uh, really appreciates for Bayshore Christian. Gentlemen, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Nice see you, see you guys. See you, boys. Love you, guys. Love you guys. Yeah, love, love you guys.